Hey, good morning and welcome to this special edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast on this Labor Day 2024. The date is September 2nd, 2024. Man, this this year is starting to fly by the election. We'll be here before uh, before we know it. OK, so let me uh, let me get to what I'm going to talk about today. I got several topics that I'm going to get to one that I'm going to focus on, but one uh, several that I want to opine on. First off, Israel has erupted in protest uh, over the Israeli hostages that were killed. We have some video that we're going to play for uh, for you, and I'm going to explain to you and actually with the help of a video from Alan Dershowitz as well, why that is completely stupid and Israel is rooting for the wrong team. I know that I'm not there. I'm not. I know that my family member is not being held hostage. But Israel is putting themselves in a precarious position uh, by uh, the way that they're protesting or what they're protesting for this ceasefire. It's nonsensical. It's stupid. All right. They should. Israel should not be protesting for a a ceasefire. Uh, Kamala Harris gets scolded by Gold Star families after she tried to scold former President Donald Trump. And it has backfired on her over the weekend. Also, we've got a video from Senator Tom Cotton calling Kristen Welker out for defending her uh, for defending her on the on her Sunday morning program. Uh, San Francisco 49er, I believe he's a rookie, a rookie wideout was shot. He was robbed or they try uh, an assailant tried to rob him over a Rolex watch that he was uh, that he was wearing. This occurred in broad daylight. I believe he ended up being shot in the chest. Earlier reports was that he was shot in the arm. Uh, but what I'm seeing now is that he was shot in the chest and you can see the video where he has part of his chest covered up. So we'll get to that. Uh, there's been no convention bounce, at least according to an ABC poll uh, for Kamala Harris after the DNC convention. But guess who has gotten a bounce since her speech? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. That's not good news for Kamala Harris. Now, I'm not saying that Trump is going to win, but I'm saying uh, that they I believe the left thought that they could just pull the wool over everyone's eyes and make this a runaway campaign of some sort. And that isn't happening. It's still a close race, I believe. Uh, But uh, if if uh, if the Trump Vance campaign can smoke Kamala out, if she finally does a real press conference, if she bombs at the debate, then uh, it's not going to be good for Kamala Harris. But Trump has got to work on becoming likable. For Trump, it really isn't about the issues. I mean, obviously, the issue on abortion. Actually, some people on the left, for whatever reason, think Kamala Harris is doing better, depending on which uh, poll you read on on the economy, which is absolutely insane to me, uh, given the fact that she's uh, in office right now. So that tells me that Trump and Vance have to do a better job of saying, hey, you're in office. They have to keep pounding that. You're in office. Why aren't you doing that now? Why Why don't you do it now? You're in office. Why is the economy bad? You're in office. Why did we, you know, why did you over-report nearly a million jobs? And also, finally, what we're going to get to and break down, are we living, reliving the George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton campaign? All right, so we're going to get to that and more on this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. Again, a special Labor Day edition. Today's show is brought to you in part by Priority Gold. Economists warn that massive tax hikes could devastate your IRA and your 401k account as the stock market braces for impact. With inflation on the rise and global uncertainty looming, it's clear why central banks and savvy Americans are turned into gold. In times like this, Proverbs 2120 reminds us to preserve what we've built. Right now, that wisdom points us towards gold. If you haven't had your eye on gold, it's time to make it a priority. My name is Carl Jackson, and I'm urging you to call my friends at Priority Gold to find out how they can help you diversify your savings with physical gold and silver, silver, you can call 1-800-405-GOLD or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden for a free gold info guide. Plus, see if you qualify for free shipping and storage. Act now to get your portfolio working for you while the market is golden. Call 1-800-405-GOLD to speak with a gold specialist or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden to learn more. That's 1-800-405-GOLD. And also today's show is brought to you by MyPillow.com. Now, especially with uh, Christmas and the holidays inching up on us, this is a good time to order early, especially while these deals are going on. So you've asked and MyPillow has listened. They're finally bringing you the most requested offer ever. 
Right now, you can get the queen size premium My Pillow for just nineteen ninety eight. My Pillow is made with a patented adjustable feel. It adjusts to your exact individual needs, regardless of your sleep position. It helps keep your neck aligned and holds its shape all night long, so you get the best sleep of your life. But that's not all. You can get their six piece kitchen or bath towel sets for just twenty five bucks. The brand new mattress mattress topper for as low as sixty nine ninety eight, and their famous My Pillow bed sheets for as low as twenty five bucks, and so much more. Go to mypillow.com or call 800 858 0263. Use the promo code Carl Paul Favor to get huge discounts on all my pillow products, including the premium queen size my pillow for just $19.98. That's the lowest price ever. Don't delay. Order today. Remember, use the promo code Carl C A R L. I don't spell it like the communists at checkout. All right, guys, I want to first play you this video of this NFL player shot in San Francisco and forgive me I don't know why I forget his name uh, but I do it's it's something Pearsall and I and I gotta be honest with you guys I haven't watched I've watched some NFL but I've only watched it closer you know as they're inching closer towards the Super Bowl I protested the NFL for years I don't watch the draft anymore I used to look forward to watching the draft I stopped watching that I just I I got frustrated when they got woke Uh, but nonetheless I do love, you know, I, I love football, uh, you know, and, and so, but anyway, I didn't know this gentleman's name. I do realize that it's, it's, uh, it's Pearsall. That is his last name anyway. So let me see. I want to, I don't want to do him any injustice. Let me see if I can. Anyway, let's go ahead and roll it. Football player, NFL football player, wide out, wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers rookie uh, was shot uh, while uh, while an attempted robbery occurred. Apparently, he was wearing a Rolex. Uh, someone saw that. The robber saw that. And uh, this guy, listen, he's a football player. He's a man, real man. He's got some adrenaline. Thank God he's safe. Thank God he's alive. Guys, listen, I, you know, I know I heard some ESPN analysts last night. I briefly turned to that or actually Fox Sports talking about I can't believe people are making this political. You damn right. This is political. Come on. Stop being so freaking naive. I'm glad the young man is all right. Pierre Saul. I know that's his last name. Forgive me. I don't know his first name. I'll have to check on that. Uh, But anyway. I'm glad he's all right. I'm glad he's going to be okay. Apparently someone else was more critically injured. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the assailant or somebody else with him, but the guy's wearing a Rolex watch and you know, he gets, uh, he gets robbed in union park. I'm guessing the guy didn't get the watch since they struggled over the gun. This guy gets shot again. Thank God he's going to be okay. I wish he had had a gun. That's the only thing I'd say. I, I wish that it was legal for him to carry in the state of California, especially when you're an an NFL player wearing a Rolex Rolex in one of the most beautiful cities that used to exist. It's no longer that way. Everybody's packing up and leaving San Francisco. Not everyone, uh, you know, but obviously a lot of businesses have packed up to leave San Francisco. Uh, You had Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom has have turned the city of San Francisco, one of the most beautiful cities in the entire world, into a complete and utter basket case. So that's what you're with. Uh, that's what you're witnessing there, that video that you just saw. So to that young man, I hope and pray uh, that he will have a productive uh, and great career. I pray uh, that he stays safe. I'm thankful that he is safe and he's going to be OK. From all reports, I wish he would have had a uh, I wish he was allowed to carry a firearm so he could have popped a cap in that other fool. Uh, and that way, somebody else doesn't have to be uh, have to worry about being robbed uh, later. All right. Because, uh, you know, that's what's going to happen. That guy's going to be let out and he's going to cause more chaos because they're pretty soft on crime when it comes to that. All right. Now, let me get to the uh, <clears throat> I want to get to these gold star uh, gold star families. I already forget which video is. Uh, is first here, Gabe, but let me just look at uh, my list. And guys, forgive me because I was putting this together with the help of Gabe. Okay. All right. And I'm looking on the, I'm looking at the wrong message. Ricky Pearsall, by the way, is the name of the 49ers, uh, 49er guy. So I'm glad he is okay. All right. Now I'm looking at the wrong, the wrong list. The last is first. Is that what you said with the uh, – okay, so that would be Tom Cotton, Senator Tom Cotton, I believe. 
just go ahead and play what you have with that. I'll just I'll just react to it. You guys forgive me. We put this together on the fly this morning because uh, somebody didn't give us a cut sheet, probably because it's Labor Day. I won't tell. I won't tell anybody Tony's name, Gabe. Um, but uh, so we threw this together on the fly. So forgive me. We're piecing it together. And now I can't even find the videos that I sent uh, to Gabe. So let's 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 just go ahead and play the first one. Whatever I said earlier, Gabe, I apologize. Bottom line, though, I guess, Senator, is it oh, ever Senator appropriate to make campaign content at military grave sites? He didn't take campaign photos there. These families, Gold Star families, whose children died because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's incompetence, right, let's pause invited there real quick, him Gabe. to now, the cemetery. Let me and set they, the scene now that I know what's going on. So this is Senator Tom Cotton on Meet the Press with Kristen Welker. And here's the controversy that broke out, right? That What the left is, it's actually not a controversy. Excuse me. The left wants to make it a controversy, pretend, because they don't have any policies to run on. So their goal is to make voters hate Donald Trump as much as possible. That's the whole campaign ploy. Kamala Harris stinks. Kamala Harris stinks. And the left knows it. The Democrat Party knows it. I've got some evidence and some news that I'll share with you in just a second. They all know that Kamala Harris stinks. They're starting to realize that Tim Walls was a big mistake, her picking him. Uh, But obviously... That was one of her first acts besides stealing the nomination that proves that she's unfit to serve uh, as president of the United States. So what we're seeing now, Gold Star families, the 13 young uh, servicemen and women that were killed in Afghanistan in August of 2021 because Kamala Harris and Joe Biden wanted a photo op for 9-11. And so they rush the uh, basically the retreat and surrender uh, out of Afghanistan causing 13 service people to be killed. President Trump last weekend uh, was at Arlington National Cemetery laying a wreath on behalf of those 13 Gold Star families. They personally asked them, or many of the families personally asked uh, former President Trump if his team would take pictures and video for them on their behalf. He did it. Apparently, you're not supposed to do that, uh, but President Trump was listening to the people, and I'm not Uh, President Trump was listening to the people. So his campaign did that for the family members. Kamala Harris says she came out with an ex post. Oh, how dare he does it. He's politicizing this. I would never do this. Uh, And the families basically go off, go off on her because Kamala Harris never got a call from or these families never got a call from Joe Biden. They never got a call from Kamala Harris. And then you had Kristen Welker uh, that lied on Meet the Press. So, so ardently trying to defend uh, her boss, Kamala Harris, in part. Yes, they're all aligned. Uh, So trying to defend Kamala Harris that she slips up big time and says that uh, Kamala Harris was there to receive the bodies when they came home at Dover Air uh, Air Force Base and nothing could be further from the truth. Kamala Harris never even showed up. Uh, So that's the scene that I'm setting here. So we're going to be talking about the Gold Star families for just a few minutes and a couple other clips that we're going to show you uh, after this. But this is Kristen Welker. This is how much Meet the Press, MSNBC, CNN, all of these guys, the mainstream media are completely in the tank for Kamala Harris, for the Democrat Party, just because they hate tra- uh, Trump so much, they're unwilling to give you the truth. Let's go ahead. Can we start? Let's go ahead and start that video over if we could, Gabe, now that I've given a little more context for it. This is Senator Tom Cotton on Meet the Press with Kristen Walker. Bottom line, though, I guess, Senator, is it ever appropriate to make campaign content at military grave sites. He didn't take campaign photos there. These families, Gold Star families, whose children died because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's incompetence, invited him to the cemetery. And they asked him to take those photos because, as they told me yesterday, when I spoke to Kelly Barnett and Darren Hoover, the parents of Taylor Hoover, who has Arkansas ties, they don't get to go to the beach on Labor Day. They don't get to have barbecues. This is their one chance to have a memory of their children Mm -hmm. to commemorate their service and to honor their sacrifice. They wanted President Trump there. They wanted to take those photos. You know who the families also invited? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Where were they? Joe Biden was sitting at a beach. 
Kamala Harris was sitting at her mansion in Washington, D.C. She was four miles away, 10 minutes. She could have gone to the cemetery and, and honored the sacrifice of those young men and women. But she hasn't. She never has spoken to them or taken a meeting with them. Well, it's they, because they did her, meet with them during the dignified it's transfer. Because of they her, were with them at the dignified transfer. Her and, her and Joe Biden's incompetence, those 13 Americans were so killed that was in the Afghanistan. Why or the slip up? They were with them uh, at the dignified transfer, meaning when the bodies came home from Afghanistan at Dover Air Force Base, both Kamala Harris and Joe Biden were there to greet him. If you remember, Joe Biden got in a bunch of trouble because he was watching, looking at his watch uh, as the bodies were being unloaded from the uh, from the military aircraft at the time. Kamala Harris was nowhere to be seen. This is how much they're in the tank. Christian Welker uh, has become a complete and utter joke as far as I'm concerned. They, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm so busy trying to, I don't want to tell the left what to do with their news media organizations. I wish they will become more, uh, just have some honest conversation with people and perhaps do a little more studying instead of being completely in the tank. It's okay. Uh, listen, we get it. There's some people at Fox that are completely in the tank for Trump, but you know they're in the tank for Trump because they flat out say it. At least Kristen Walker have the courtesy to flat out come out and say it. Here's a video montage of the Gold Star families who took uh, umbrage, if you will, with Kamala Harris after she came out and tried to attack Trump. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, this isn't a political thing. Not uh, You know what I mean? It's not necessarily about Trump. This is about you, Kamala Harris. And this is what we asked Trump to do because Trump has actually called our families to see how we're doing to follow up. And you have not. Let's go ahead and roll that montage, por favor, Gabe. Harris. Vice President Harris. Vice President Harris. My name is Steve Nakui. I'm the father of Lance Corporal Kareem M. Nakui. My name is Jim McCollum. I am the Gold Star father of the United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal Riley McCollum. This is Mark Schmitz, Gold Star father of Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz. My name is Darren Hoover, and I'm the Gold Star father of the United States Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover. My daughter-in-law, Sergeant Nicole Leanne G., was killed in the Afghanistan exit at Abbey Gate. Our kids were murdered because of your administration. You were not at Dover for the dignified transfer. And no time have you reached out to me to offer your condolences, to offer thank you for Kareem's sacrifice and service. You have 13 families who have been waiting over three years to so much as get a phone call, to so much as hear our kids' names no. said aloud. You have failed for three years and eight months to acknowledge our kids. Where were you and Joe Biden on August 26, 2024? Nowhere near Arlington Cemetery. You couldn't be bothered to be with us or even say our kids' names, just as you have done for the last three years. Vice President Harris, I ask you, why won't you return a call and explain to us how you call my daughter-in-law's death a success? President Trump has called. President Trump shows up. But President Trump takes the time to hear our loved one's stories. We invited him to be there. These are the only memories we get to make with our son. Mm. And it is you who is playing politics and trying to detract from our memories made that day. President Trump has been there for us. He's been a rock for us. He showed compassion for us and he showed he truly cares for the families that truly do know what the ultimate sacrifice really is. I gotta tell you, man, uh, that, one, that one got me. That one got me. Um, when Senator Tom Cotton in the previous video said uh, that these families, they don't get to you know barbecue, go to the beach, any of that kind of stuff, I'm paraphrasing. The, the, the only... The only time they get essentially to to memorialize or uh, during the year, or remember their, their 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 kids, at least on Labor Day, is this event that's held at the Arlington National uh, National Cemetery. And uh, Kamala Harris, how how dare you even have the audacity, you fake, phony punk to put out a X post trying to scold Trump when it was you and Joe Biden that were desperate 
that were because you're so feckless and weak when it comes to foreign policy. It was you and Joe Biden that were so freaking weak and politically calculated that you wanted a photo op for 9-11. So you know what you did? You risked the lives and you ended up killing 13 of our service members, not to mention the Afghanistans that were left behind to be executed that helped out our soldiers and the ones that fell off the plane in disbelief that we would just abandon them like that. You disgusting, despicable human being. It was you and Joe Biden that were seeking the photo op. Man, I cannot be more disgusted with this chick. I pray to God she doesn't step foot near the White House. She shouldn't even be the vice president. She shouldn't be a senator. This lady is completely unworthy of the of the offices of the office that she holds and the office that she's seeking. It's uh whew. anyway, Mark Schmidt Schmitz, excuse me, one of the gold star dads had a message all to himself. All of them did. Uh, we just don't have time to play all of them, but I wanted to play his. Uh, this is a, a over two minutes long, about two and a half minutes or just over or thereabouts. So just bear with us. Let's watch this one video uh, of um, uh, the father, Mark Schwitz, and then we'll move on to another topic. But I want you to, this is the day that Joe Biden's presidency uh, took, uh, took it on the chin. I mean, this is a day that it started to fall, started to collapse. People started to uh, started to collapse. People started to ask questions. This Afghanistan retreat and surrender was a total disaster. His presidency, along with Kamala Harris's vice presidency, has been a disaster ever since. Let's let's go ahead and roll that one, Gabe. This is Mark Schmitz, Gold Star father of Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz. Here we are in a beautiful holiday weekend day. I got to stop what I'm doing, spending time with what's left of my family to address a heinous, vile and disgusting post put out by Kamala Harris, trying to incite those that don't follow the truth. That President Trump was in Arlington as a political stunt. Shows you how much you know about the 13 families. We invited him to be there. Groundwork was put into place by Congressman Ice's office to make sure we followed protocol. Why did we want Trump there? It wasn't to help his political campaign. We wanted a leader. That explains why you and Joe didn't get a call. Imagine for a second that your kid is killed and there's a president of the United States willing to take you under his wing and listen to you. That's what we found in President Trump. Certainly not you and certainly not Joe Biden. You have 13 families who have been waiting over three years to so much as get a phone call, to so much as hear our kids' names said aloud in the halls of Congress, that a State of the Union, hell, anything. The irony behind your post that you give a rat's ass about our military or our veterans. Jared's brothers and sisters in arms, the rest of the 12, their brothers and sisters in arms. Is an outright lie. We're living proof of that. You're despicable. You have zero business. Running this country. And I pray to God, Americans, wake the hell up and get your ass out of office. You have spit in our face for the last fucking time. All right, some harsh language there. Forgive me. Didn't realize that was there. <laughs> but uh, uh, that last piece. But uh, listen, I, 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 totally understandable. 
from a father that lost his uh, that lost his son. And uh, not so much as a phone call from Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. And then she has the nerve to politicize uh, Trump attending the uh, the uh, laying of the wreath at National Arlington Cemetery. When, as uh, as Tom Cotton shared in a previous video, she was just a few minutes away. She could have gone there pretty easily uh, from her vice uh, president's mansion. Uh, and she chose not to. And why did she choose not to? Because people will remember how weak and feckless they were. All right. Let me let me share this uh, some information with you that I don't think bodes well for the Kamala Harris campaign. And again, I, I listen, guys, don't rest on your laurels. Don't anybody stay home. Everybody do your part. Make sure you vote. Vote early. Try to convince somebody else to vote. Get involved if you can, where you can donate uh, if you've never donated before. But I want to share some information uh, with you real quickly. A couple of headlines uh, that I ran into. One, there's been no convention bounce. Uh, for Kamala Harris. So let me just give you uh, the summary. This is according to the ABC and ABC News poll. Uh, hat tip, this was on Breitbart. So an ABC News Hipsters poll revealed that VP, this is as of Sunday, uh, yesterday, a day before Labor Day, uh, that Kamala Harris received, quote, no overall bounce in support, close quote, after being formally nominated as her party's presidential candidate uh, at the DNC. And I suspect that it'll get even worse. I, that interview last week was disastrous. I, you know, I, I try to check myself and say, you know, if, if Democrats give a good speech, even if I totally agree, disagree, I'm like, man, you know, they they came with it. I told you they're lying or they're wrong, uh, but they came with it. You know, Michelle Obama, I couldn't stand her speech at the DNC, but she can deliver a speech better than anybody out there. I mean, I, I don't even think it's close. She's that good. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, Harold Harold Ford Jr. Uh, that's on Fox News now sits on the uh, sits on the uh, uh, the five. Honestly, one of the most uh, Democrat uh, disagree with his policies. Can't believe he's a Democrat half the time, uh, but seemingly one of the most res uh, respectable, intelligent and honest Democrats uh, that are out there, uh, in, in, in my opinion. Uh, but when it comes to Kamala Harris, I, I think she's a disaster. I didn't. I did not think her speech was that good. I think her speech was. I thought her speech was average uh, at best. Uh, but you know, uh, some people thought it was the bee's knees. I just did not. Uh, the poll shows that Harris's race against former President Donald Trump is quote is essentially the same now as it was before the Democratic convention. Uh, this, according to ABC's Gary Langer, his online survey conducted from August 23rd through 27th in English and Spanish with a quote unquote random national sample of 2496 adults found that 50 percent of respondents favored Harris and 46 percent favored Trump. Um, uh, the respondents are also more also more satisfied with the Trump Harris matchup compared to when President Joe Biden uh, was a presumptive Democratic nominee. The public by 53 to 45 percent is more apt to be dissatisfied uh, with Harris uh, Trump contest. But that compares with 71, 28 percent in July with Biden in the race. All right. So anyway, I could go on. Uh, but bottom line, she has not received a bump. Here's another column real quick. I'll just briefly read you uh, the summary because actually the opposite has happened. Oh, my goodness. Now, if I can find it. Oh, my goodness. Now I do not see it. OK. All right. So anyway, it was on town hall. I don't know why I don't. Let me make sure I apologize. Um, man. OK. Uh, so anyway, Joe Biden's polls have risen since Kamala Harris's <laughs> DNC speech. Now, he's down negative six points, but it rose uh, to negative two points. So he uh, he gained four points. He's becoming more likable. Uh, the less people see him and the more people see Kamala Harris, or at least after just her one speech, uh, it's amazing that Joe Biden is being viewed as more favorable than he was uh, just even a couple of weeks ago. It's absolutely insane. Uh, that's how whack Kamala Harris is. This lady is not a good candidate. I don't believe she's a good person uh, by any stretch of the imagination uh, and is starting to show up, at least in some of the polling. All right, before we get on to Israel and then close the show out, I want to just quickly talk to you about or remind you about Priority Gold. Uh, remember that gold is a hedge against inflation, all right? Uh, so that's what you can use it for, one of the best ways to use it for, or contact your financial advisor. Uh, but economists are warning that massive tax hikes could devastate your IRA or your 401k account as the stock market braces for impact. With inflation on the rise, 
rise in global uncertainty looming, it's clear why central banks and savvy Americans are turning to gold. In times like this, Proverbs 2120 reminds us to preserve what we built. Right now, that wisdom points us towards gold. So if you haven't had your eye on gold, it's time to make it a priority. My name is Carl Jackson, and I'm urging you to call my friends at Priority Gold to find out how they can help you diversify your savings with physical gold and silver. All you have to do is call 1-800-405-GOLD or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden uh, for a free gold info guide. Plus, see if you qualify for free shipping and storage. Act now uh, to get your portfolio working for you while the market is golden. Again, call 1-800-405-GOLD to speak with a gold specialist or visit PriorityGold.com slash golden to learn more. That's 1-800-405-GOLD. All right, now, <clears throat> just real quick, let's get on to Israel, and then I'll close this out by explaining why I think we're looking at the basically a the reincarnation of George H.W. Bush, the father of George Bush, uh, in other words, Bush 41 versus Bill Clinton, after I learned some history that, frankly, I probably should have known but did not know. But before we get to that, uh, I want to play these video clips from Israel. I'm going to give you my opinion. Uh, let me let me let me just break it down. Here's what happened, and then we'll run through the videos. Uh, we'll run through the videos real quickly. So, uh, six Israeli hostages, uh, one with American citizenship, I believe, dual citizenship, uh, were murdered uh, over the weekend. They were alive still, including one of the ones that was more famously known, uh, if I could use that word, Hirsch. Um, uh, Hirsch is 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 what he's uh, known as, and a lot of people were rooting for him. Uh, it, it, we've seen video of him where he literally had lost part of his arm, uh, and there was video as recently as April, I believe, April or May, where he was still seen alive. His parents recently spoke at the DNC, uh, letting uh, you know just uh, just asking for uh, people to you know basically step out, step up, and help him out, let him know that he was loved. Uh, but uh, as the IDF were closing in on some Hamas terrorists inside of one of the uh, the, the the tunnels, apparently the six people that were alive uh, realized that the IDF were on their trail, uh, and they went ahead and murdered all of those people in cold blood. Now, why would they do that when IDF is on their trail? Obviously, to sow more chaos, and also I would think to send a message: don't come for us in these tunnels. Uh, we have more hostages still. Apparently, uh, over a hundred hostages. I believe it's a hundred and one. If if I, I don't know if they're dead or alive, I suspect the vast majority of them are dead. Uh, but a hundred and one hostages that remain, uh, and I I suspect the message is: uh, listen, don't come for us, or we'll kill more. Uh, and also to sow chaos and discontent. So I'm going to play you a quick uh, a quick video. Let's uh, let's let's show the video of the crowd if we could, uh, Gabe. And I'm going to tell you why these protests are a huge, a huge mistake on Israel's part. Uh, Carl, you're not Jewish. You don't have. Listen, I, I'm not Jewish, uh, but I have common sense and I know what evil is and I know what good is. Uh, and and trying to work a ceasefire deal with with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Iranian proxies, Hezbollah or Hamas is just stupid. I, it, it Honestly, there's no other way to say it except it's stupid. Let's go ahead and roll the video of the protests here. Gabe, por favor. I believe that's in Tel Aviv. I mean, the streets are packed and basically the pressure is on. We uh, the 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 pressure is on against Netanyahu, right? All right. So what's been happening is the U.S. Uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have been withholding arms from uh, from Israel, or slow walking arms to Israel, uh, and is and a bunch. Of, uh, apparently, there are a bunch of weapons. Uh, Tom Cotton had mentioned later on in that interview, or earlier on in that interview with Kristen Walker on Meet the Press, it wasn't just these. Uh, strategic big bombs, guided bombs uh, that would do some serious damage. Apparently, there were several types of weapons that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are intentionally slow walking to Israel. They're actually doing the same to Ukraine. I think they wanted to drag these wars out 
uh, so that they could use them as uh, as you know political props for their foreign foreign policy chops as they head up to the election. I think that's what they're doing, but they're causing nothing but destruction. It is so dumb. I, I, listen, I, you you. I'm sorry. It defies common sense to ask Israel, the only democratic nation uh, in that region to have a ceasefire with terrorists. And by the way, Israel has already offered and was willing to comply with ceasefires, uh, but the Hamas terrorists were not willing. Hezbollah are not willing. The Ayatollah of Iran is not willing. And not the people of Iran, but their leaders. Their leaders, their leaders are evil. The only thing that they understand is strength. All right, and so... You still have Biden. I'm sure it's hungry for a legacy. Kamala Harris, the same thing. They want Benjamin Netanyahu out of there. They want a ceasefire. Notice they're not calling for a ceasefire in Iran. Uh, but it is just it is just plain up stupid to think that you can ask terrorists for a ceasefire as if they're going to listen to you. They're terrorists. They think you're evil. So you're calling for a ceasefire. You All these people that are calling for a ceasefire, man, I hate to say this. They're just inviting another October 7th. I hope that Netanyahu ignores them for their own safety. Let's roll to the next video, por favor, Gabe. Uh, this is more of Israel. This is this is the funeral of Hirsch. Of Hirsch Goldberg, Poland is his name. And again, I knew by Hirsch on media, forgive me, but Hirsch Goldberg, Poland uh, is his full name. And, you know, apparently uh, they have it. They have funerals really quickly out there. Uh, so uh, they just found the body, discovered the body over the weekend. Uh, so that's the video that you're seeing. Here's Alan Dershowitz putting this into proper context, basically saying what uh, what I've said. But this is a guy that understands context, being Jewish, uh, being an attorney, being, uh, you know, uh, traveling to Israel. Uh, this guy knows what he's speaking of. Let's go ahead and roll the video of Alan Dershowitz on the question as to whether or not uh, there should be a ceasefire between Israel and terrorist organizations in Gaza. The Israeli government has accepted the full terms of the ceasefire agreement. Who's rejected it? Hamas has rejected it. You will not see a single sign among the protesters referring to that. They all say, we want a ceasefire. We want a ceasefire. Let's have a ceasefire. All right. So Israel has agreed to a ceasefire. Maybe take your signs down. Maybe make a phone call to your friends at Hamas, your friends in Iran, who are probably financing some of what's going on, and tell them to accept the ceasefire. It is such amazing hypocrisy for protesters against Israel for not accepting the ceasefire. These people are such ignoramuses. Their bigotry blinds them so much. They're such useful idiots. They don't even know. They're protesting the wrong people if they want a ceasefire. If you want a ceasefire, protest Hamas. If you want a ceasefire, praise Israel for agreeing to the ceasefire. All right, so Alan Dershowitz hit it. I mean, he hit the nail on the head. You should be praising Israel. You should be protesting Hamas. Again, this is just, I, I, I hate to say it, this is just pure stupidity. I, I, Israel has offered a ceasefire. And why would you want a ceasefire with terrorists? All that you're going to ensure is that there's another October 7th if you continue to let these people get away with it. And by the way, I think you should be protesting. I, I think he can add to that. I think you should be protesting Secretary of State Blinken. I think you should be protesting uh, VP Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden because they're slow walking. Uh, they're slow walking the IDF's defeat. This war should have been over with within two weeks to three uh, two weeks to, to, to a month uh, from what I've heard from IDF people on X. All right. But you have this prolonged war that is completely unnecessary, allowing these people to keep the hostages. They should have been feeling the heat immediately for taking hostages and we would have had much more safe. It's likely that Hirsch and others would be alive. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, but I uh, but I believe it is likely if Israel would apply the force and pressure they needed immediately uh, to uh, to get their hostages back. But because of the Biden Harris administration, uh, you know, warning them and playing this political game, uh, they weren't able uh, they weren't able to do so. All right. So moving on from that, let me let me close it out with this. I think what we're seeing is the resurgence. And by the way, please subscribe to the podcast wherever you go to get your podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube, and Rumble. But I think what we're seeing is the reincarnation of the George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton campaign. Uh, the only difference is 
Kamala Harris never won a single vote in a primary like Bill Clinton did. But there was an article that appeared this weekend or over the weekend from New York Post uh, entitled, The Harris Campaign is Riding a Wave to Defeat and Maybe Setting a Trap uh, We've Seen Before. All right. Uh, And so I think, again, we're reliving this uh, George H. uh, W. Bush versus Bill Clinton campaign. uh, And it might it might come to the point. Um, and I think it is actually the Democrats are going to regret ditching Biden. Yes, uh, he's a he's a dementia patient. There's no doubt about it. But he has an excuse. Many people have said it before for not being able to talk. Uh, Kamala Harris has no excuse. This chick is hiding uh, from the media. And the only interview that she that that she's given to the media had to be edited. Uh, she had to have a support animal with her uh, or the support dude with her. Uh, Tim Walls. I mean, this uh, that's absolutely despicable. I think I don't think that's a smart play because I think you show weakness uh, to the world that's uh, that's watching. But for those of you that may not be in the know or may not recall or don't know this part of history, Bill Clinton trolled George H. W. Bush uh, in the 1992. Uh, 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 campaign, basically. So when George H.W. Bush was ducking the bait during the fall of 92, according to the New York Post, Clinton's campaign sent a str- uh, a, a seven foot um, a seven foot chicken mascot to every one of Bush's campaign events. That's actually really smart. I hate to admit it. Um, and it was effective. Eventually, they it, every stop that he made, all right. Or every campaign trip, uh, you know, that he made, there was this seven foot chicken. <laughs> oh, I hate to admit that's a good idea, but it's a good idea. So basically, George H.W. Bush ended up caving. He gave uh, Gabe Clinton his three debates. Clinton ended up winning or, or, or emerging as the alpha male. I mean, you guys might recall, uh, read my lips, no new taxes. George H.W. Bush at that time, conservatives were upset, even though I wasn't into politics at all. I mean, I've seen that clip, you know, a thousand times, uh, metaphoric. I mean, not literally, but you know what I mean? I've seen it a lot. Uh, and so the conservative movement was upset with George H.W. Bush because here he is coming in, for, coming in after Reagan, uh, running as Reagan's third term. And this guy decides to raise taxes. Not a good look. Uh, so, again, Kamala CNN interview filled with softball questions. Not a lot of pushback. Some decent questions, you know, but I still no pushback. Uh, but it didn't settle the, uh, the, the the question of whether or not Kamala Harris is ready. And I don't think she is. Even liberal media uh, was saying uh, the preparedness. This is one guy I forget from which news organization. Uh, the preparedness issue is potent in large part because Democrats and liberal reporters themselves seeded the ground. One reporter said another reporter uh, said Harrison from CNN said Harrison Waltz's first major interview was big on general generalities and soft on policies, much like Harris herself. So all she did is fueled the flames after that interview. All right. That interview was absolutely disastrous. And of course, she's been guarded and she stayed away from cameras or from I shouldn't say from cameras because obviously she's the vice president. But she stayed away from interviews like that after that Lester Holt interview where he asked her, have you been to the border? And um, and she was like, "Uh, I've been to the border. And he was like, you haven't been to the border. And she was like, I haven't been, you know. Paris or something like that, either something stupid uh, that she said. And that was so disastrous. She decided I'm not doing interviews for a while. Uh, According to even the New York Times reported at the time that Harris, quote, all but went into a bunker for about a year, avoiding many interviews out of what aid said was a fear of making mistakes and disappointing Mr. Biden. So she's hiding like Biden, but apparently uh, she's hiding or at least evading, trying to evade debates, just like George H.W. Bush did in 1992. Uh, Biden has put Kamala, no one has confidence in Kamala Harris. Biden has put her put her down, claiming in a biography that, uh, quote, Harris was a work in progress. A political profile of Kamala Harris uh, uh, said that uh, a reported of the, quote unquote, dysfunction in the VP's office. Her own staff widely complained of disorganization and, quote unquote, managed chaos. Um, a Washington Post profile. Uh, uttered the same uh, sentiments uh, just just last month. Biden's own staff dis uh, dis Harris by uh, by uh, quote reportedly denigrated her political strength and suggested that she would not be as strong a candidate against Donald Trump. Close quote. The Atlantic claimed that quote few people seem to think she's ready to be president. Close quote. These are liberal outlets. Another uh, uh, liberal outlet early uh, reported early in his administration, President Biden criticized his VP for her lack of 
gravitas, all right? But the media is still kissing her butt. They're still determined to put her or help her cross the finish line over Donald Trump. Um, Here's one of the things that New York Post reported. As much reporters don't want to see Trump win, most reporters also don't want to miss this next turn of the story when Harris inevitably trips up from a verbal miscue. I'm not sure if I believe that. I believe that these people are so in the tank uh, for Kamala Harris, just like we saw with Kristen Walker uh, and Tom Cotton grilling him. They won't grill Democrats in that same way. They'll try to look legitimate. They'll ask a good question, but they won't follow up. They'll just let the, you know Kamala Harris or Tim Wall say whatever the heck uh, they're they're going to say. Uh, but I'm telling you, this is um, <clears throat> kicking Joe Biden to the curb may prove to be a disaster uh, for uh, for Democrats. Here's where some polling stands: the real clear politics polling average uh, at this time of year, anyway, in the campaign in 2016, Hillary Clinton was up by six points at this point uh, in the uh, 2016 uh, presidential election, and in Michigan. Um, Harris is not up by six points, man. I missed one of the Hillary Clinton was up six points in the, at this point. Okay. So Harris is barely, uh, barely up. The race is basically neck and neck. Hillary was up, uh, by six points nationally, real clear politics average at that time. Michigan Harris is up two points. Biden was up at this point in time, 2.3 points in 2020. Uh, Clinton was up nine points at this same point. Um, Back in uh, back in 2016. Uh, So more than likely, Trump is in the lead of these polls. Uh, I mean, we're obviously watching uh, we're obviously watching an anti-democratic campaign. This is a lady in Kamala Harris that has not taken any questions. This is a lady that is dangerously uh, liberal. Um, And and I'm hoping and praying that this uh, that that this uh, that this campaign is going to going to going to fail. Uh, it says here, basically, Kamala Harris is similar to Mike Dukakis. You guys might remember that race in 1988. He was the uh, opponent against George H.W. Bush in 1988, immediately after uh, the Reagan presidency. But they say here, most importantly, it feels danger- dangerously close to a reprise of the failed 1988 Mike Dukakis presidential campaign that never came out of its left-leaning bunker. Uh, and that's uh, apparently what uh, Kamala Harris is repeating the same thing. She's acting like Dukakis uh, in <laughs> in uh, uh, she's acting like Dukakis in 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 this sense. All right. She won't come out of her left wing, you know, bunker, if you will. And at the same token, uh, she's acting like George H.W. Bush and that she won't accept debates. And she's just not confident and she doesn't have the ability to be able to do it. I've heard a couple of people, a very smart people. Um, one was on I, I think it was James Lindsay, Lindsay, who said he doesn't he believes that she may be faking dumb. I don't think she's faking at all. I mean, if you go back and watch uh, interviews or or her grilling uh, people. And when she was on, you know, on C-SPAN as a Senator, uh, she was never good. She's just good at being nasty. If she's asking questions, if she's the one asking questions, she can be nasty. She can be cutting. Uh, and, but she was even average when I saw those, uh, but receiving the questions is a different thing. She's just not good. Listen, guys, I appreciate you tuning in to this edition of the Carl Jackson show podcast, this special labor day edition until next time. Do not grow weary doing good. Please follow me on all things social media.